Hello everyone, welcome to yet another session of the Leadership Talks here at Vijana Co. And uh, today we'll be diving into a very specific thing that we as young people have faced challenges in. But we are really glad that on this session we have somebody very inspirational, somebody that has made it over time. And not much to say, but uh, she's, she has climbed over time because of the personal brand that she has built, as well as um, being able to overcome whatever challenges have come her way throughout. It has not been an easy ride because uh, personally I've been following her and all the achievements back from home. Uh, she'll be able to talk about more of her achievements. And uh, today we have none other than Patience Pony Aikoro. She's the founder of Fem Talk that is in West Nile. She's also at the moment working uh, with uh, the embassy and uh, she'll talk more about herself. So today with us on our show, it's Patience Pony Aikoro. And uh, Patience, before I finish everything I have to say about you yeah. and that I know about you, I would love yourself to introduce yourself more to the people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abigail. Um, it's a pleasure to be back home. I call Vijana Cope home yeah. uh, because of the amazing platforms that has created for me and for the journey it has worked with me in leadership, but also in personal branding, which I will mention later on. And um, just to the viewers, my name is Patience, as has been rightly put. I work with the Austrian Embassy Development Corporation, and I'm a lawyer. I recently completed the Law Development Center and passed it. I'm excited because my graduation is in April, but also, um, thank you, but also I work, I, I, I mean, I'm a volunteer as a member on the board uh, of the European Union Youth Sounding Board Uganda, where I lead the thematic area of gender equality, and I advise on thematic areas of gender equality still and human rights. Oh, wow. Yes, and of course you mentioned um, a founder or team leader that I prefer uh, mm -hmm. at Femtok West Nile, which is a volunteer-based organization in mm -hmm. Koboko District in West Nile region of Uganda. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much, Patience. Thank you. And uh, there are lots of things that I have heard about you, being a volunteer, yearly mm -hmm. alumni, and also FIDA Uganda, mm -hmm. all that. And it's, it's really a huge brand you built for yourself at a young age, I would say. Yeah. Yes. So, and... Uh, I just wanted to find out how have you been able to build this brand over time? Well, um, thank you so much for your question, Abigail. You know, uh, personal branding is the reputation that precedes any human being. Mm. That means it's the mark that you live in any place you go, whether it's digital mm. or physical. So for me, in my career, of course, I first of all have leveraged on the online kind of branding because it's the most uh, affordable means for my branding. You have a phone, you have a smartphone, you have the internet, so you're able to put information about you. It's more like putting your CV or your resume on online so that anyone who Googles about you is able to find that information they need to know maybe about what you're currently working on. Um, it's a platform where you tell your story. And physically in my career, um, my branding has come in two parts. One is in networking, uh, the people I've met right from my class, the people I sit with in class, mm -hmm. people that I studied with in nursery, in primary, these are all part of my brand. Why? Because they know what passion I carry for certain things. If you ask people, they will say patience is a leader, patience is a lawyer, and she's a politician. But then all that encompasses what I love doing, which is advocating for uh, effective leadership of young people, mm -hmm. but also access to justice for vulnerable people. So that is the kind of brand that is out there. So through networking, I'm able to go to rooms where people already have an idea of what I have done before. Mm -hmm along those lines of what I carry passionately yeah. and then what I love to do. So you find Vijana will call me and say, we have this seminar, can you come and attend and be a participant? Because they know the brand that mm. you carry. They know that you want A, B, C, D, yeah. you know? It's like uh, the Bible keeps saying I, under Matthew 7, 7, uh, what you ask for is what you receive. Mm. So your brand is what you ask of the public. Mm. You're telling them I am a teacher, 
I am a, a farmer. What are you posting? Are you posting shoes? People will know, okay, you're a farmer, but what are the shoes doing here? Unless you're saying, I'm doing both farming and also selling shoes, which is also okay. So the other aspect of my branding for career, uh, apart from networking, the people I've met beyond the classroom, uh, my lecturers, um, in different leadership spaces, like you mentioned, Yali, where I've also met you, and um, and different, you know, seminars, all these conferences that we usually attend. Some of them, which op opportunities we are found online on the internet, because it's not like we have people who call us every day. Mm -hmm. You know, we go for these opportunities. So through them, I'm able to meet the network and then the branding mm. flows on. But beyond that has been also mentorship, the second aspect, which is very important for personal branding. Mm. Why? Because of course we are not exactly like our mentors. We can't be the same. You mm. just have to be yourself and learn what you can learn in that period. And then, you know, you move on with life. So for me, my personal branding in career has also been shaped by the mentors I have had in my, in, in my life, really. People I go back to and say, okay, I have this challenge or I want to access this opportunity. And they guide me. So in that way, my brand of what I want to do, of what the internet sees, or what a room full of opportunities, listens about patience, is the kind of branding that is personal, that is what we're talking about today. Yeah, um, thank you very much. That's very true. And uh, along the way, you tackled uh, the importance of personal mm -hmm. branding. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to find out, like, uh, what did it take you as patience yeah. to build your brand? And uh, as a female leader, what, yeah. are the, some of the, what are some of the challenges that you faced while building your brand? And mm -hmm. how are you able to keep building your brand over time because I've seen you're very active on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, the, I, I knew about your mm -hmm. excellence in the recent LDC via LinkedIn and everybody celebrated with you, those who knew mm -hmm. physically and those who didn't know. And uh, I've seen like you've been able to balance yeah. everything. So like, uh, could you just run through us like what are some of the challenges mm -hmm. that you faced while trying to build your brand and how can somebody overcome those hurdles? Okay, yeah. uh, thank you once again. Mm -hmm. So for me as a leader, a female leader, but also any other leader who is listening to us right now, mm -hmm. be it female or male, yeah. should know that um, when you're in leadership, sometimes you're not going to meet the entire world. You're not going to meet people one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. But where you can meet the entire world on a global market, like you've said, is the internet, mm -hmm. the social media. And because we are young people, Vijana Prize in working with young people a lot and young leaders in that, we use the internet it's so much for many things of course there are times we update our personal lives you're having fun somewhere it's okay I mean we're young we have to live the moment and enjoy but uh, when it's time for being serious um, like personal branding and all that I think it's very important because uh, there's a saying of my favorite um, one of the favorite inspirations I've ever had is Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a former justice of the Supreme Court of USA. She keeps saying, in this life, whatever you do, do it so that when you leave, people can appreciate you for what you have left behind. That trademark that is there for you, that is on your name, that when someone listens to Abigail, they know that this is what she has done as a leader. And you know, it sounds like it's something so big, but to our listeners, it starts from the little resources that we have. So personal branding is very important for the trademark we leave behind. But also it's very important because you get to tell your story the way you want it, you see. So I can decide to say, um, Today I'm posting about uh, my passing of LDC. Tomorrow I'll not post about ABCD. Another day I'll post when I'm at the beach or what, because that is how I want to tell my story. Mm -hmm. But then there are people who want to tell their story in only a professional way, and that is that. Like their media has only professional things, nothing personal. Others create another account for a personal account. So as leaders, I think it's important to tell our story, to even use it as an advocacy platform, our kind of branding. When someone reads about Abigail, they know that Abigail is the person you go to if you're dealing with people who are facing gender-based violence in maybe Lira community, Pakwach community or something. Why? Because that is the brand you have left and the networks get to reach you. But also physically, what people say about you. And, and also, um, when we're telling our brand, like you've said, there are so many challenges we encounter. Challenges like propaganda, people come and they're saying, okay, you're showing off, you know. So they take it as showing off, but you're telling your story. And yes, you're blowing your trumpet sometimes, which is 
many people say it's not good, but for me, I think if, it, if it's what makes you comfortable or makes you more confident of what you're doing, then do it. Mm. And also, it's, it's important to know that in personal branding, like the word personal, it is you against the world. Yeah. It is you being your authentic self. Yes, you're being yourself and you're not giving regard to any other person. Mm -hmm. So as we're doing personal branding, or as I've always been doing it, is that I center myself and then the rest obviously comes through through the taggings, mm -hmm. comments, and of course some might even ignore it, which is okay, but the message has been passed. Mm -hmm. And maybe to conclude on that particular response is um, the challenge of uh, feeling like you need social media breaks, which are very much needed. And it's important, like we said, you're running your life so sometimes beyond social media, when you're personal branding, uh, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. There are certain parts of branding that happen overnight, which is okay, like yes. updating your media and whatnot. But like building the confidence, being contented with the content you're putting there, it takes time. And so even if you're offline or you're not attending seminars as much as before because you have personal challenges, it's okay. But remember whatever you left in that room when you're not there is the personal branding we're talking about. Like that reputation that precedes you, that even when you're no longer around Parkwatch, people still know that there's a one girl who used to do ABCD, that is the branding we are talking about. And of course, there are just four aspects of branding that have always guided me as a leader. One is um, carry the passion because your branding is the passion the things you like doing whether it's business something you studied the work you're doing or something you're learning that is the passion and then the other aspect that has carried me is communication when you're branding you have to communicate because people have to understand what you're branding yourself of because it makes no sense if someone reads about you or hears about you and the communication has not reached the information is not understood mm -hmm. like people still have to call abigail to ask her what did you mean by this you know it should just be obvious that abcd is clear and precise yes okay um thank you very much patience and uh, to our dear viewers, thank you for staying on with us. And in case you have any questions for our guests, you can uh, reach out to us, drop your questions in the chat, and we'll be able to get back right to you. And uh, Patience, you yeah. talked of the importance of communication mm -hmm. when it comes to branding. Yeah. And uh, over time, I've seen you being a jack of all trades, if I would say. Mm -hmm. You are the guild speaker yeah. as well as the founder. How are you able to balance career? I think you're still at school at uh, University of Pretoria, right? Yes, I, yeah, I, I so. did a short course, but it's over. Yeah, so yeah. how are you able to balance uh, school, career, mm -hmm. work, and still be able to build your personal brand based on the communication bit of it? Okay, um, thank you so much. So um, while at school, I volunteered a lot mm -hmm. within what I would term as what I enjoy doing most, which mm -hmm. is advocacy, yeah. um, leadership and also really speaking up for people who are not in rooms where opportunities are. So for me, it will always be the schooling and then uh, the times when I do not have class because I would mm. never ever trade class for any other activity. That's when I would be out there volunteering. And of course, um, during my holiday transitioning or waiting for results of LDC is when I did the short course, which was online uh, for University of Pretoria. Mm. And then um, so many other opportunities have been really online, but also I leveraged a lot uh, during the lockdown time when the internet was the jack of all trades for us, was mm. the market for us, you know, uh, like you rightly put it. So we'd have a lot of time to ourselves because you're in the lockdown mm. and all that. And in, in, in that, the kind of communication I would put out is it has to be complete. Like I said, people mm -hmm. should not keep asking you. Yeah. You're saying what, where, what happened, when was it? Um, what platform was it? Mm -hmm. So that kind of information that you're putting on the internet should leave people knowing that ABCD happened. But if you say something and you leave out some information that is pertinent, maybe say the organizers of a particular event, mm -hmm. then it will leave questions. And so our personal branding goes beyond um, even communication. It goes to the content that we put across. Mm -hmm. What information are we putting? If you're saying you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, or you're a farmer, what information are you putting there? Have you researched, you know? So personal branding also involves continuous learning because we, I, I love calling it rebranding. So it's mm. important to always personally rebrand yourself beyond branding. Yes, you've kept a brand there, then you've decided, now I want to change to do ABCD, you're mm. a leader. 
or you were a student and now you're working, you know. So you, you're, you have the flexibility to rebrand yourself and the networks you had, whether physical or online, you're able to communicate with them mm -hmm. and text them and say, hey, Abigail, I'm done with school, I'm now working here. You know, you communicate to them so that mm -hmm. they have it in their mind and carry it wherever they go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, thank you once again. And uh, from your discussion right now, I've just picked how you've uh, emphasized us mm -hmm. leveraging yeah. social media like the internet, yes. since we're in the era of the internet, I would say it. So um, uh, before we could wrap up, mm -hmm. how would you advise young people to be able to stick to their brand? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've seen most people who start up with a brand, being professional, and then in the middle of it all, they get up into the mix of uh, having lots of personal life and then those uh, mm. online graduates, yeah. the Twitter fights and all that. How would you advise young people to stick to their brand mm. throughout and just as you've done? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I, like we said earlier on, we mentioned about the challenges of personal branding. Yeah. And among that is the propaganda or feeling tired, you know, the consistency, keeping mm -hmm. up with it. So I must say that if you want to keep your personal brand, or for me, what I have done is mm -hmm. that I avoid certain <coughs> instances. As a young leader, we might not be required to respond to certain things always, you know. Mm -hmm. Some questions will come up on the internet. You don't need to respond. People mm -hmm. will comment on your, whatever you've posted. You don't need to respond. You don't them mm -hmm. an apology so you need to focus on yourself focus on your brand and those who appreciate you will actually understand mm -hmm. and, and and get to know that and then of course for those who usually post in between personal lives and all that it depends because like we said personal branding is about being authentic mm -hmm. being yourself so if you feel like um that is what makes you happy mm -hmm. be sure to always keep up the game. Mm -hmm. When you're having your fun, yes, have your fun. But then when someone asks you about the professional reputation, are you able to keep up to it and walk the talk? That if Patience is said to be a leader and she's brought to speak about leadership, are you able to actually show and emulate the characteristics of a good leader without looking like everything you forgot them at the beach? Mm -hmm. No, you have to keep up and, you know, balance and put your all in. Um, mm -hmm. Just bring your A game to whatever you set yourself to do. And I think that is what uh, Vijana as well preaches to the young leaders. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Patience. Bring the A game to whatever you're doing. Viewers, it's, uh, it's not an overnight thing like she said. <laughs> it's something that comes gradually. And um, as Vijana, we are really happy that we are able to take this discussion on. We shall not be the only ones to benefit from it, but very many are going to be able to benefit from it and hopefully one day get to where you are at the moment. So, Patience, do you have any last words for our viewers? Um, well, I just want to appreciate you for tuning mm. in and listening to this amazing topic. Mm. But then you just have to know that keep authentic, uh, be consistent with your content, and always push for your passion. But also know that personal branding is what will speak for you when you're not there. Mm. It is what will clear the air if at all the media brings out something so controversial because people will know what mm. to say about you. Yes, and just be yourself because as leaders, there's going to be hurdles, but then in the end, the personal branding is the trademark that we hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Patience. And uh, thank you to our viewers once again for joining us. And remember, your personal brand is the story that you tell to people. Be authentic, communicate the right way, and keep it at your A game. Here from us at Vijana Co., you can always follow us on our handles. You can follow us on YouTube, find us on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, we are looking forward to hearing from you next time. Until next time, it's me, Kalenda Abigail, your moderator for today. See you.